Uh, let's end on an interesting question here from John Osborne. I don't know how much you want to get into here, but John writes in, what's your relationship like with the nature boy, Ric Flair these days? Have you guys ever had a legit falling out? So let me just say this in the business, you know, you're lucky if when you're done, you can look on your hand and, and count the number of true friends you have on one hand. If you can do that, if you've got five friends that you can really call friends, you've had a successful career. But being friends doesn't mean you have to talk on the phone all the time and uh, do something together, go to dinner every week and all that. Rick and I had a very, very good relationship when I was wrestling and we were on the road together and we had the same thought process and we were heading towards the same goals. Once you step over into the office, you have a different schedule. And my schedule was completely different. My job duties was completely different. Expectations on me were completely different. It was just a whole different life. And uh, Rick has since went his way. As far as the business goes, I have went my way. I don't think there's any dissension. There's no nothing negative about it. It's just sometimes people grow apart, and uh, that's pretty much what happened, and it's more of a out of necessity because we are going separate ways that uh, we don't see or talk. Um, but for a very long time, I will say that I had a very good friend, and that's the way I will – look at it, taking it to my grave. Yeah. I mean, it's worth mentioning you and I are friends, but it's not like we're hanging out every week. We have a great time here on the show. And when we do get a chance to catch up, it's, it's like, we just pick up where we left off, but that doesn't mean we're not close. It just means we're busy and grown men and got shit going on. That's it. And we're all just trying to make a living still. And uh, not for you, you have making about six livings. Oh my God. Listen to me. You, whatever you are, but Rick and I are still trying to, you know, live a nice lifestyle and, you know, do some nice things. I'm, you know, I'm a guy who likes to travel. I like going to Aruba for a week at a time and all that stuff and going buying a new truck occasionally about every 10, 12 years. So, you know, we're just, you go whichever way the money takes you. And, uh, Right now, it's uh, he has a separate journey. I have a separate journey, and you're right. You and I are, have become good friends, and I appreciate what you do for this podcast because without you, I wouldn't be here. And Efren writes in, have you talked to Howard Finkel lately? Any good Finkel stories? No, I haven't talked to Howard. I haven't seen Howard. I, I saw uh, a picture of him somewhere, and I, I, I don't remember where but he had talent around him and i'm thinking it might have been maybe the last uh where they have the old timers and legends on the show might have been that show it was maybe it was a backstage shot or something had a sweet beard zz zz top style that he'd grown out had never seen that version of howard before but the guy's a friggin' genius he's Facts, figures, you can ask Howard anything. He's uh Yeah, he's just a he's just a walking on encyclopedia. Uh Savo the Savior writes in, who is your favorite and least favorite horseman tag team partner? Well, Tully's always gonna be alongside Oli. There will be probably share that um, distinction. I don't know if they feel the same way, but I feel like Tully and I were the best team in the world at one time. I feel like Ole and I were a good, solid team, and I learned a lot from him. At that point in my career, it was very important to get the things that he offered as far as <clears throat> credibility and no wasted motion and storytelling and all the things that, that – only brought to the table. Um, least favorite. I don't want to put anybody in that distinction. I mean, it's pretty obvious the ones that didn't work out and, and the whys. And I've talked about what it took to be a horseman and 
how unselfish you got to be and you got to be single minded that your job is to go out and <clears throat> create something, you know, with the good guys on the other side. And if the audience didn't care about them, it's your job to make them care about them. And, um, no reason to single out any one person. I'm sure most of the audience have their least favorite and most favorite, but we'll just leave it there. Uh, thinking man sports writes, if Tully did join you in WCW slash the NWA in late 89, early 90, how do you think things would have played out differently for you, Tully and Rick long-term? Well, I think it would have had a totally different look if we came back in the door riding the wave of you know because we were treated pretty well with wwf we weren't abused um i think we still had some luster obviously and so did at that time jim heard apparently or they wouldn't have agreed to bring us back um i feel like we could have picked up right where we left off because we were both healthy we were both you know, we were never better than we were at that point together because now we had diversified and wrestled probably every top team on earth at that time, by that time. Uh, so Tully and I were great. You know, if you would have combined us with Rick, and if, I don't know if Ole would have wanted to come into the mix or not, but it would have been uh, just adding Tully Blanchard to your talent list beefs it up any way you want to look at it.